So the impetus for these new lease accounting standards dates way back to the early 2000s. You might remember companies like Enron and WorldCom and Arthur Anderson that committed these massive accounting frauds. And shortly after that, there was a bit of a crisis of confidence. Regulators were worried that the public was going to lose trust in the financial reports that companies were issuing, which could be catastrophic for the capital markets. So they set about trying to improve the ways that companies did corporate governance, the way they did their audit practices, and how they did financial reporting. And that's really where Sarbanes-Oxley first came into effect. But one of the other things that they did was try to close a lot of the accounting loopholes that these fraudulent companies had been exploiting. And during that process, they discovered that there were trillions of dollars worth of contractual obligations tied to leases that were not being reported on companies' balance sheets. So they set a plan in motion to try to update the accounting standards. Now, believe it or not, there was actually a lot of drama around this proposal and all these lobbying groups emerged saying that it was going to be devastating to the commercial real estate and equipment finance industries in the United States if leases moved on balance sheet, that three million jobs were going to be lost and that a trillion dollars worth of GDP would be lost. The debate dragged on for about 10 years until 2016 when the new lease accounting standards were finally published and four years later just about every public company on the planet had adopted them and there was no sign of this predicted lease apocalypse. Uh, in fact, exactly the opposite had happened. Stock markets had risen to record highs, unemployment had gone to record lows, but there was an impact on corporate earnings and profitability because the administrative burden that these new standards put on the back offices of these organizations was so high, particularly in asset intensive industries like telecom and transportation, logistics and manufacturing. There are literally armies of people running around trying to track all the changes to the lease portfolio. So a lot of people think, even though the effective dates have passed for these new standards, that all the drama has gone away. But stay tuned, because there's a lot more fireworks ready to go off in this space.